Hey SolidWorks community, so a while back we provided a tutorial series on designing a functioning geared heart pendant with a rotating message. In that series we showed you how to design the enclosure around a few existing gears using mostly essential and advanced modeling features, and we brought the pendant into the assembly environment to run through using basic and advanced mechanical mates. In this three-part series we'll be building on those lessons with a similar hexagonal pendant this time starting with a completed enclosure and running through how to create different configurations of the pendant, as well as setting up Configuration Publisher to make dropping the different configurations in the assembly environment as easy as selecting different parameters from a drop-down list. Check out the description below where you'll find a link to the past heart pendant tutorial videos, as well as links to download the heart or hexagonal pendant SOLIDWORKS models for you to follow along. Let's get churning! In part one of the series, we'll be manually creating a few configurations of our completed enclosure part model. We're going to create three additional configurations of this pendant. One at the same size, with four outer gears instead of three. We'll create a larger version that is scaled up 30% and has three outer gears. And finally, a larger version that has four outer gears. We can add additional configurations in the Configuration Manager tab, located above the History tree. First, let's rename this default configuration to hex geared pendant enclosure dash small dash three outer gears. Now let's create a new configuration. Right click at the top of this configuration tree and select add configuration. And we'll name this one as the same small size but with four outer gears. In the configuration manager tab, you can now see this new configuration has a green check mark by it, so it is the active configuration. Now let's edit our model. First I'm going to hide all of the internal components that we designed this enclosure around, and then pull back the history tree to before we created the message window cuts. To change the design to house four outer gears instead of three, I'm simply going to split the enclosure in half, and mirror the top half over to replace the bottom half. Sketch on the front plane and create a long line right through the center of the enclosure. I'm going to dimension this line to five inches long, just to make sure it clears the large pendant we're going to create later. Now exit the sketch and navigate to Insert, Features, Split. In the Split Property Manager, ensure the line sketch is selected, and then hit the Cut Bodies button. Here you now have the option to select which bodies to split, and in this case we want to delete the bottom portion of the enclosure, so ensure the Consume Cut Bodies option is selected. And I'll repeat that operation for the other half of the enclosure. Now in the Features Command Manager, click on the Mirror operation. Select the split face for one of the enclosure halves, and under Bodies to Mirror, select the Body to Mirror. Under Options, ensure the Merge Solids option is selected. And I'll repeat that with the other enclosure component. I'm mirroring the two enclosure components in separate operations so this Merge Solids option will take effect. If I mirror both the base and the lid in a single mirror operation, merging the resulting mirror wouldn't be an option. Now pull the history tree back down to the bottom and we have our new four outer gear configuration. Back in the configuration manager tab we can test out the functionality of the configurations by right clicking on the default configuration and selecting show configuration. Now let's add a third configuration. This will be a large three outer geared version. This time I'll edit the model earlier in the history tree right before sketch 16 which is a reference sketch for the countersunk holes we created for the outer gears. This pendant is designed to be assembled together with off-the-shelf hardware, so I'm setting up this large configuration so it can use the same size hardware as the small configuration. So I'm going to make sure all of the bodies are visible, and navigate to Insert, Features, Scale. Select all of the bodies in the work area, and we'll scale this in the X and Y direction 1.3 times, or a 30% increase. And as I pull down the history tree, I'm also going to edit a few of the sketches for the gear window cutouts. Here I'm just increasing the various dimensions by 1.3 times as well. As you do this, just make sure you select the This Configuration option in the little drop down that appears in the Modify Dimension box. This makes sure the dimensional changes only take effect in the large configurations. You could also increase all of the fillets and chamfers 1.3 times, 
but I'm not worrying about it for the sake of time in this tutorial series. Again, let's increase the dimensions of the message windows on the other side by 1.3 times. Finally, let's add a fourth configuration, another large version, this time with four outer gears. With this new configuration added, I'm simply going to find the split and mirror functions we created earlier and unsuppress them. This will automatically update this second large configuration to use four outer gears instead of three. Now to wrap up this part of the series, let's quickly test our configurations to make sure they are functioning properly. And there we have our initial configurations manually set up. Stay tuned for part two of this series where we will use a design table to quickly create a dozen more configurations and we'll show you how to set up Configuration Publisher in preparation for dropping configurations into an assembly file.